Hi, I'm Lester Knutson, one of the founders of the International Informix User Group and producer of the Informix Tech Talks. This video, History of Informix User Groups Part 2, this section uh, starts at the Informix User Conference in 1995 and covers uh, through the conference in 1997. The Informix User Group leaders uh, got together at this conference to start the Informix user group. At this point, there were 34 user groups and over 4,000 members around the world. And this is where we had our first international user group meeting. I just I just recall that was where we sort of kind of had a, the first I, IUG meeting uh, or group discussion, if you will. and. Uh, presented the idea, and uh, I don't know that we had the official board of directors, but we kind of formed an organizing committee that would investigate that and uh, talk further with uh, with Informix and, and with Christine. And, and uh, her, her boss, uh, Nancy Toomey, who I think probably did a lot of background or work behind the scenes to, to grease the wheels, um, so that's that's my recollection in terms of anything specific that happened then, other than a meeting of the minds and everybody thinking it was a great idea. Uh, that's my recollection. So so somebody asked me today, if we had an election, then, and that, go ahead, Carlton. Yeah, by this point, the four of us uh, had kind of hashed out what the organization would look like. We'd been exchanging emails back and forth for the year between Tampa and San Jose. We knew what the what the overall organization was. We knew approximately how many board members we wanted to have. We knew the number was 11. We knew that we wanted some of them to be from outside of the United States. We even knew who some of those people should be because we wanted to have people from different parts of the world and had already talked to them prior to the conference. So Gavin and, and some of the and some of the others um, we'd already talked to. And at the birds of a feather, we just said, here's, here's the structure of the organization as we perceive it. Here's our goals, what we think the, the IIUG could be or, or should be. Um, we think that you know that this is how the how the organizing committee should look like. Eleven people from different parts of the United States. We have some suggestions for who could be on the board, and then we opened it up for volunteers. And that's where Clem Akins came from, and some of the others that that were the first board of directors. And yes, there was a vote at that meeting that where everybody in the room said, yes, we agree with the concept that it's something that they would support, that they gave their support to the 10 or 11 of us that, that we put up on the, on the board as, as possible first members. And we walked out of the room with the, with the caveat to, to go forth and build the thing. Yeah, so I think for me, uh, San Jose, I think I was uh, at the birds of a feather, but hadn't been involved with with really the, the formation and certainly hadn't been involved uh, between Tampa and San Jose. Uh, but it was at that meeting where I met Walt and of course, every, well, everybody wanted to be involved. <laughs> and uh, from there, uh, he and I started exchanging emails and it was soon after. So you know, that was July. By August, we had spoken and form, formulated that uh if you know if we had a domain i had a machine i had you know a, a 10 meg tap directly to the backbone of the internet at, you know back in the day and uh was willing to willing to to administer this administer iiug.org that domain and whatever came of it and so from there uh after i think uh what carlton described is after the birds of a feather where the group kind of got a blessing of sorts. Uh, later that year, I think uh, maybe October, so a few months later, uh, Walt put me forward to be uh, to be on the board as well. And uh, we all said yes. <laughs> and uh, by November, 
we had a presence on the internet uh, in November of 95. IIUG.org was born. Awesome. And I think that Walt was kind of like, you know how George Washington is like the father of our country and was like the only president ever be to, to be elected unanimously. That's like Walt Hulkgren because, you know, he was like this figure out there because of the 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 mailing list, right? That that connected all of us originally. So that was just um I, I think, you know, that's huge. Um and really I, I think Christine Shannon um and and Nancy Toomey more behind the scenes really helped to get us all together because frankly, if it weren't for them and if it weren't for frankly Informix footing the bill for us to do all of our activities, um, you know, none of our none of our employers or anybody was really going to come up with a everything to fund what we did. But then there was um there was not a huge amount of money at all, but there was some um money devolved. So and and uh, other than you know paying for some long distance phone calls and stuff, um which we did pay for back in the day because, yeah, that was a thing. Um, and Formex really um, seemed to embrace us in in the sense, or at least maybe they embraced us because they wanted us to be an effective marketing tool for them. But wherever they embraced us, um, it was a good thing that they um, they did that because that was what allowed us to to move forward by allowing us to have the sessions, allowing us to have user group space at the conference, et cetera. Um, I, I think that was just really important. And yeah, Christine Shannon and Nancy Toomey were awesome. So the the IIG logo actually came from Informix, or at least from Christine. She was the one that paid for the graphic artist to come up with several different logo designs and we eventually voted on one and that's what went up on the on the website and on our letterhead and, and everything else I, I was going you guys remember this book yeah. Oh, yeah um we've got a picture in here of the uh lady who who uh did the logo i don't know if you can see it i'll i'll blow it up later uh uh, work work for Informix and and Nancy. But what? Who wants to take uh, this first meeting and tell us about it? What do you remember from it? I, the note I have here is no left turns. Somebody's got to start with that. What does that mean, Mike? Yeah. So uh, that first that first meeting we were in San Francisco, and we were at the Hotel Monaco, which is in a nice part of town, but adjacent to the Tenderloin. And the tenderloin was to the left, and we were pretty close to where the tenderloin district uh, of San Francisco begins. And the tenderloin, at least in those days, was was not a nice part of town. Uh, it was kind of rough, uh, not so much during the day, but certainly as night fell, it was not a place you wanted to walk through. And so the uh, just to keep it keep it easy. Uh, we weren't allowed to take left turns, so we couldn't leave the hotel and take a left. We had to leave the hotel and only go to the right. Well, I remember that uh, it was kind of overwhelming <laughs> for me, at least, uh, that we had to dive in and build uh, bylaws and uh, all that kind of thing to, to really form, form uh, ourselves into uh, a group that could operate uh, with the kind of umbrella that we wanted to, uh, both uh, separate, but then collabor in collaboration with Informix. And I found that all really fascinating. So having to come up to speed on that, you know, uh, none of us uh, had, formed user, had you know, formed user groups at this scale before. And uh, it was just, uh, tough work, but lots of fun. I remember all of the excellent people I got to hang out with and work with. I mean, really, because um, that's what a group is made up of is people. And um, you guys were just awesome um, to, I mean, have a lot of people with just the same goals. I, I believe we met in a conference room for a couple of days in the hotel and we were pretty much together for almost all of that time. And um, I think everybody just, had common goals and purpose, which is what made our group so great. Yeah, it was an awesome group to uh, work together with, and, and uh, it was an awesome team. 
it was very, very, very long hours. Yeah. And Christine, you know, had a schedule and we were going to abide by that schedule because if we didn't, <laughs> we weren't going to get stuff done. And she, she slapped our wrist when she needed to. And then she fed us well. Yep. I, I, the couple of pictures in this book that, uh, I remember one is, uh, the street car. We were all crammed in one corner of a, a street car going someplace. I think we went to a theater one night. Um, Beach but, Blanket Babylon. Yep. That was, uh, that was an awesome, uh, So after that, and this is where um, I was getting busy at work. So I, I, I remember feeling like work was taking off and pulling me uh, in another direction. Um, what do you guys remember uh, from the next conference, which would have been in Chicago? Well, there's, to me at least, there's one other important piece in this first year that we need to talk about. And that was the second board meeting in Sausalito. Mm -hmm. Because in between Hotel Monaco and Sausalito is when the, the charter and bylaws really came together and we solidified the organization. And so I, I know I was heavily involved with that. Walt was also very involved with that. And, and we had the goal that it had to be done by Sausalito so that when we went to the conference in Chicago, we had all the pieces laid out. We had the roadmap done. We knew where the, where every person and every organization, because we were talking about creating not just the IIUG, but also a user group leadership council and an advocacy council and a number of other parts and pieces. And it all had to be done. And we made the goal to have that done in Sausalito. And I just remember we'd meet as, as a group and then Walt and I would spend hours into the late night hashing out, you know, do we put a, an apostrophe in here? You know, is it user apostrophe? Yes. You know, users, no apostrophe. I mean, we got down to the nitty gritty on, on the minutia, but when we were done, we were ready to go to Chicago. What what I remember about Sal Salido was we were in a conference room which had this great view overlooking the San Francisco Bay. And Christine, to keep us working, would go close the curtains so we couldn't look out the window uh, and get distracted by that great view. And we're like, wait, we've got such a great view here. Why? I also remember uh, dinner at a restaurant was uh, someone Christine knew were a great Italian restaurant. Yeah, uh, Christine's boyfriend Duilio owned a restaurant. Owned? Yeah. Or was the head chef, maybe head chef at the restaurant, I can't recall. But phenomenal food, uh, uh, olive oil pressed on site, it was quite something. That's, I remember the olive oil presses there. He was yeah. chef. What I remember from that dinner is poor Christine, and she could not insult her boyfriend by not eating the food as he prepared it, and she was really uncomfortable eating very rare lamb, I think it was, lamb chops. So I think somebody had to help her out by eating those very rare lamb chops, which I'm sure were delicious. Um, but yeah, not her thing, but you know, being um, the boy or the girlfriend of a, of a, of a chef, you got to walk that line. That was um, that was complicated for her. Cool. Well, then we had Chicago, and uh, what do you all remember from the Chicago User Conference? Yeah, my 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 deepest or most indelible memory uh, of Chicago uh, has to do with the fact that uh, we had. Uh, Two folks from uh, from the other side of the planet, uh, Gavin Noor and uh, and Carrie from uh, our, our our Kiwi from New Zealand, and uh, because of time zone and their jet lag, uh, when we all started to flag, they just started to rev up, and uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge night owl, 
and a great lover of jazz music and Chicago's jazz scene was, uh, was wonderful. And so the three of us uh, and some others that would then fall off a little earlier would, uh, would go and listen, you know, go to, go to a jazz place at, you know, 10 p.m. And then that one would close at midnight and we'd, we'd follow the crowd to one that closed at two and then we'd follow that crowd to one that closed at four. And then we'd come back to the hotel and crash for a couple hours and then meet uh, the rest of the the rest of the uh, board at 7:30 for breakfast, and we did that a couple of nights. Uh, kind of overwhelming, uh, but the music was great. The company was wonderful, and uh, yeah, we still got a lot done as well at the conference. And it was the year of the yeah. Macarena. I'm just going to tell you that was the year um, I got to the conference at Day Lake if my husband and I were traveling and. Earlier that year, we'd been to Mexico, and instead of like hearing beautiful Mexican music, we heard like, you know, the whole Macarena thing. And then we went to Iceland and to Scotland, and we were in Scotland, and we go to a Scottish Cayley, and we heard the Macarena. And then I got to the user conference, and once again, at the one of the events that they did for us, it was the Macarena. It was the Macarena every single place that year. That was the year of the Macarena. Yeah, that was the year you were elected as president, Carlton. Like, correct, correct. What do you had, What do you remember about that uh, task? Well, we had uh, we had another session. We had another user groups around the world session, and then we had the uh, birds of a feather, which is when we presented the the charter and the bylaws and and all the formal. I don't want to say incorporation documents because we weren't incorporating, but all of the, the formal structure of the IIUG. We explained it all to everyone. Um, and then we had the people who were there vote on it. Did they accept it? Did they not? And then we had uh, board membership uh, elections. Uh, most of the people, I think, were reelected onto the board. And I can't remember whether it was in that meeting or if it was in just a board of directors meeting where Walt said that um, his one term as president was enough for him, though we kept lobbying for him to keep going. Um, and somehow it it fell to me to, to, to be the second uh, president of the organization. This is probably a very tangential thing, but... Um... I have been active and still am uh, to a lesser degree to a uh, traditional American music, folk music, uh, appreciation kind of group and organized concerts and stuff. And so I had seen that and with SEIUG, how someone can just sort of by default wind up as president for life. And I, I wanted to make a make certain that that didn't happen for the new IIUG. And so I, I certainly had the interest and the desire to go on, but I thought it'd be better to set a precedent of just the, just the one term. So that was my primary motivation to do that. And uh, I can't think of a person that would have been better to do it than Carlton did, because he'd been there almost as much, certainly as much in terms of work, but maybe not quite so much in terms of chronology from the very beginning. So I think that worked out pretty well. If I could Thank just you. add though, um, that's just sort of another parallel between Walt Holtgren and George Washington, just sort of going to the <laughs> father of the country, father of the informics user group thing, just saying. The so we came out of that meeting and we said, okay, we we've got the we've got the backbone. We we're now a, a real organization. And as we went into the next year's planning. We said, okay, what are we going to do as a group? And one of the things that came up was, well, let's try and have an impact on the user group conference itself, the Informix user conference. Because while it was wonderful and they had the best conferences in the world, bar none, as a group, we felt that the sessions weren't technical enough. They were more marketing oriented. They were more sales oriented. And... And what we as a as an organization was hearing from people is they wanted the nitty gritty. They wanted the deep down technical bits and bytes. So it was during that that year, among some of the other things we did, that we went to the conference organizing committee and said, we want 
to have some sessions that are ours. And the first year they didn't really agree with it because the, the first IIUG track didn't happen until the year after I stepped away. But it was in that first year where we said, okay, well give us two or three sessions that we can have. And one of them was Ask the Experts that was held in, was it San Francisco? Where, were, where was the next conference after? Uh, San Francisco, Chicago? yes. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's where we had the first Ask the Experts and, and we had one or two other sessions there. And it was the success of those sessions that built into us having one and then eventually two tracks at the user conference. But at that first ask the, ask the experts, we had all the top developers, the development managers. I mean, it was a, it was a rogues gallery of, of wizards. And we had some really good questions that were asked and uh, it was, it was a very popular and, and uh, uh, excellent session. Yeah, I remember that. That was fascinating. And then at that, wait a second. Go ahead, Kathy. Tell me, was it at the Chicago conference? I think it was Chicago. It's possible it was the next one in San Francisco that they brought the guy from Prentice Hall um, out because Informix desperately wanted more books about Informix. Uh, so that you know they wanted something outside of the user manuals for people and i know i think that's where carlton and i at least went and um got introduced to the guy and started re writing those books um wh which one was it carlton was it the chicago or san francisco i'm thinking chicago but my brain i, I think it was chicago and i know all i know is that you beat me to the punch yours was out first um and then I think mine trailed, at least my first one trailed by a year or so. But yeah, it was, it was around that time. So take, take a minute, Kathy, and tell us about your book. Now, looking back at it how, all these years later, I'd love to hear your perspective on it. Um, well, it's odd because every once in a while it pops up um, <laughs> on, you know, I have myself on Google alerts because my, my new gig is politics. So we have to keep track of ourselves. So I have myself on Google alerts and every once in a while it's like, Kathy Kip, uh, Informix, uh, what is that? 4GL, SGL, a step-by-step -step approach, I think it was called. So um, yeah, I think my one regret about that book is it needed a better index. I needed to spend uh, more more post uh, production time on that index. But I thought the technology was further along than it was. My apologies for anybody who's struggled with that in that book. But generally, um, no, it was it was a cool thing to be able to do, and um, yeah, just to get it out and get it published. And and Carlton, tell us about your book. Well, um, which one? Because if if you count all the way through from from there all the way into IBM, I think there's five or six of them. But I got started with with just the Informix Administration Handbook. You know, what does it take? And my assumption was that you knew nothing about Informix, and the goal was to to tell you everything you needed to know to install the engine, do some basic tuning, configuration. You know, build database, back them up. You know, da 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 da. Um, and so that was so. The first one is Unix based. The next one was Windows NT because golly gee, that was going to be the OS that ruled the world. And uh, so I did an NT book, and uh, both of those first two were translated into foreign languages because I've got copies in Russian and Chinese and so forth. And then since then, there have been books that were published by uh, IBM Press. And then there was the, the second edition of the administration handbook that was published by um, kind of an offshoot of IBM Press. Um, and that's the, the latest one that there was. And for me, it, it actually taught me a lot about the engine um, because I'd learned things that I didn't know. Um, and it's probably the only reason I still have a job today with IBM is because people think I know something because I wrote a book. And when in reality, it's just the opposite. You know, it it was the, the chance for me to figure out how things worked, and it it just worked out that it benefited it benefited other people too. 
I'd like to echo that. People do think that you know a book if you write something, and it's weird because, right, you read lots of stuff on the internet these days. By the way, can I just mention that when we started all of this, Google didn't exist, at least not as we know it today, right? Now you can't like Google or anything for help. We just had to rely on each other, and that's why this was such a great group because we did have great people we could rely on to help us with questions. I, I, and I, this is, I think, to echo that, uh, the Informix list that Walt started was Google for me. And I used to every day read that just to get, you know, that was my how to do stuff. And uh, it was it was crucial. And see, at least for me in writing the books, I would I would sit down and I'd say, OK, I'm going to talk about a particular topic, I'd go and, and try and break it every which way I could to figure out what, you know, how things actually worked. And in some cases I found bugs and I worked a lot with Informix to get things fixed, but it was going through all that trial and error that I was able to winnow down, okay, here's the most efficient way, or in my opinion, the best way to do things. And, um, so it it was a tremendous learning experience for me. It wasn't that I was a wizard and I just kind of went blah. Here's a book. No, it was, it was trying to break stuff and 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 then put it down on paper. And my goal was trying to give people what they needed. They didn't have Walt's excellent group, right? So what my goal was to like. That's all the stuff that I struggled with that I want to try and just make sure that somebody else doesn't have to struggle with, right? That's what I think was my goal because, you know, parts of it, you know, databases are freaking awesome, right? The first time I heard of a database, it's like, well, that's a good idea. Um, and uh, just that, that making it all work, that was something else. And cool. Kathy, I think you, you'll agree with me that we certainly did not get rich on doing this. No, we had hopes, right? <laughs> but no, yeah. that did not happen. <laughs> but if, my, my one comment is that sort of a little story, and uh, it stuck with me for quite a long time. I forget what, uh, which uh, conference it was. I believe it was one of the ones in Overland Park, uh, Kansas City. And there was the, the plenary, the main session, and I was, we were all filing out. And I was right behind um, a couple of people who were with, Informix slash IBM at the time. One was a uh, a younger per member of the sales force who turned to her colleague and said, I've never seen, talking about the Informix users, she said she had never seen such a loyal bunch of users with the general connotation, I think, being that all the users were there and they loved the product and that was about it. And I thought to myself, boy, you kind of missed the, missed the point of a user group. Because I've always thought that I two people really, uh, even though they're uh, the people who think of them focus on the technical minutiae, they really are creative artisans. And the people who are really committed and go to these conferences and are in user groups are there because they want to know everything about the tools and they want to have a hand in creating better tools for themselves because they're the ones that are committed to really putting themselves into what they do. And so that I think has been borne out with folks like you guys and all the other people who have been part of I IUG from around the world for all these years. And um, I think that's the real key element of a user organization, in my opinion. I think that uh, overall, I think working with you all, working with others, others not here, uh, and uh, the time on the IIUG uh, board uh, was for my career kind of pivotal. Uh, it while I my my career didn't didn't aim towards you know further use of Informix and Informix products. Uh, I learned a ton uh, about how to conduct myself in in large groups, how to get work done, uh, how to uh, how to work in uh, kind of a public domain or a, what has now become called open source type of environment. Uh, yeah, so uh, a lot of my work after uh, after IIUG uh, 
contributed to uh, the public domain and uh, open source, uh, including now today my uh, teams that I lead uh, produce open source uh, software. Uh, it's uh, a lot of that is all, you know, I think of it as I look back uh, as pointing back towards uh, my time on uh, working with the IAG and on the board, working with you all. And, and Mike, can you tell us what you do nowadays? Yeah, so today, uh, today I work for a company called Twilio. Uh, I am an engineering manager, uh, so I lead, lead teams of engineers. Uh, today I do a lot less programming than I used to. Uh, uh, a lot less, pretty much close to zero. <laughs> uh, leading teams is, is what I do. Uh, I love leading tech people. Uh, so uh, my teams today produce uh, open source software that enables developers to uh, to quickly and easily enable themselves, enable their applications to use Twilio services. Twilio provides communication services. So if uh, if you get a text from uh, Uber, if you get a text uh, from uh, DoorDash. Uh, Home Depot, uh, just about any text that you might get. And of course, during COVID here, uh, we've gotten a lot more of those from the vendors that we use. Uh, odds are that's Twilio. If you get emails from, from those vendors, odds are that's Twilio behind the scenes. So we, we drive the communication for lots of vendor, lots of retail. Uh, uh, if, you're getting, if you're getting vaccinated uh, and you're getting texts, odds are that's Twilio. And, uh, 80% of those use the uh, the libraries that my team writes. Awesome. And it's integrated into Informix HQ, the graphical monitoring tool for Informix. There we go. So it, I, I'm, I, it never ceases to amaze me when I find out you know, who who's a customer because uh, it's kind of it's kind of the who's who list of tech companies, non-tech companies, big companies, small companies uh, that use Twilio. It's easy to get enabled, uh, so small companies can do it easily, and we're, we do huge global scale uh, for uh, SMS messaging, email, things like that, uh, so the largest companies in the world can use us too. Awesome, thank you. Kathy, any last words, and tell us what you do now. Yeah, so, um... Well, first of all, thank you for inviting me to participate in this conversation. It was so exciting to reconnect with all of you because I, I think of you guys, you know, whenever like my book pops up on, you know, Google, Google alerts, I'm like, oh yeah, I wonder what's going on with my Google for or my Informix friends. And um, I just want to say someday somebody is going to have to tell me what has become of this Informix because, you know, I'm kind of out of that world now. I, I want to say the one thing of this video, I think we kind of glossed over a little bit where the fun parts of Tampa. Uh, we got to go to, was it Bush Gardens? Was that the place? Yeah. And yeah. there was this uh, roller coaster called Kumba, and everybody was going Kumba, Kumba, and there was there was a great <laughs> water ride with it down a raft. And I remember I left totally, totally soaked, and I think everything I had with me was soaked as well. And 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 the impossibly as they we went through the food line, the impossibly um, ineffective uh, serving tongs that they had to get the food which made the lines incredibly long and i and who was the break dancer i, I mean not break dancer but line dancer somebody was like really good at like you know the whole line dancing thing and i was like whoa that is just you know unexpected um anyway so i thought that was maybe something that um was a lot of fun back in tampa that people might want to know about um so i am um, kind of <laughs> i feel bad because i, I right after we had a meeting, I remember it was in October of 1997, when I had recently found out um, I was pregnant with my first kid. It turned out to be twins. And honestly, I just sort of dropped off the, the, the technical map now after that. Um, my, my kids actually, what, is it about three weeks, two weeks from now? They turn 24. Yeah, so it's been a while since I've dropped off the map. Um, but anyway, so um, being one of those people who likes to get involved in uh, organizations, I then worked on um, the local twins group, right? I was sort of, you know, got involved with them. And then I was that parent who was always volunteering at school from which I um, got elected to the local school board. And um, after years of, you know, we have a 
horrible public school funding here in Colorado. So after years of advocating for better public school funding, um, I was I decided I was going to run for the legislature in 2020. Well, it turns out there was a vacancy because of other elections, and I, I've been serving in the state house here since uh, 2019. So this is my third session in the state legislature. So if you ever get out to Denver or Fort Collins, I would love to see you, but I'd love to show you our beautiful capital here because it's, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's it's just an amazing place to work. And um, no, there's there's still more to the story, and maybe we'll cover it in a in another part or a different podcast or webcast. Uh, I'm there, still deeply. There, there'll be a part two. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, I am still uh, deeply involved with Informix. Uh, I joined Informix uh, in 2000, shortly before the IBM acquisition, and have been in numerous roles uh, all around Informix, at least uh, since then. And uh, along with Scott Pickett, I'm considered uh, a worldwide technical sub subject matter expert. So I work with customers all over the world in training and education and sales and some post-sale support and marketing and and sales planning and technical planning and product planning. I'm I've got my fingers in just about every Informix pie there is. Awesome. Well, <laughs> hey, this was a blast, you guys. I I had fun. I I uh, appreciate it. Yeah. That's awesome. Great. Thanks. Thank see you all. Bye, everybody. Bye. Great to Bye. see you. Take care. Good to see everybody. Take care. Good to see everybody. Yeah. Bye.